my name is Lindsay and I am going to be presenting on the pros and cons of the English language and what it is as a universal language. And this is by Lindsay Goldman. So most importantly, language and policy is something that is extremely important when it comes to the United States and the expansion of the English language. For me, I believe that language is not only a mean, means of communication, but it also plays a role in all political relationships. Policies and diplomacy that is in place in the world today all have to do with language and the means of communication. Language is not only a mean of communication, but it is very important when it comes to negotiation between different parts of the world. Policies and diplomacy that is in place in the world today all have to do with language and the means of communication. When it comes to policy, as I mentioned, all language plays a role politically. It is critical that those who do not necessarily know it learn to understand it since it is an international language. Today in the world, having everyone speak this language. With the expansion of the English language, there has been some things that have been lost. One of that is um, linguistic diversity. So this is basically the fact that in one territory, people speak one language and in the other, they speak a different language, but because of English, the spread of the English language, there is not likely to have this type of thing exist. Um, the spread of English language can also be accredited to social inequality, and that is that certain language have also become extinct in a sense that they are no longer spoken since there's no necessarily no need for them to be spoken. When it comes to the social inequality aspect of it, basically it is those people who speak the English language, know it and comprehend it. And then there are those who don't even know it, don't speak it, don't have any information about it. And that's where we kind of create this social inequality because those who speak this language are somewhat maybe more superior and those who don't know the language can be looked not as that they don't have as much information. Um, the importance of a universal language is that it connects language is what connects people to one another. With so many people speaking English today, there is so many other people who do not who still to this day do not have access to learning English, such as places like where they don't really feel the need to learn this English language and they're kind of in their own environment doing this. Um, this is what is ultimately prevents people from knowledge, media, and culture. It is clear that there is some sort of discrepancy and people who don't even speak a language won't understand knowledge written in this language, media in this language, and the culture of the English language or any language of that fact. Um, English gives individuals a medium to communicate and share ideas. So basically, this is what how you're able to speak with one another and how I'm able to do this presentation right now. You're listening to it, you're listening to it in English, you understand what I'm saying because we speak the same language, basically. So that's something that I understand and I comprehend in a way that it's extremely, extremely important. And it's clear that this is something that we need to have some sort of communication and a medium to speak, which is the English language or a universal language. But it's clear 
that with so many people speaking English, the 4 billion people in the world, that this is something that has so much longevity and is something that is going to stay ultimately. So it is also believed that the expansion of the English language only beneficial to the United States and Great Britain. Some believe that this is a way to advance English speaking territories. So ultimately, these territories such as the United States and Great Britain, having the English language in this sense is something that only benefits them and advances them in their policy and what they are trying to speak with one another and get advanced, like advance in the political realm of things. It is also believed that it is linguistic imperialism. It is that um, those who speak English are better in a sense and have this sort of upper hand um, territories who do not have the resources to learn English, English and are unable to compete globally are somewhat left behind while the United States and Great Britain advance in their political aspect of life. Policies that have been implemented for the expansion of the English language are pluralism in the U in European Union. So this is something that protects smaller languages, but promotes the English language. This is something that demonstrates how other places in Europe want to keep um, their native language sacred, but also expand on teaching English to those. Um, English is taught to individuals at a very young age, and this is something that they teach kids who are younger and ultimately apply it in their curriculum. Um, I live in California and it is a very um, predominantly Hispanic culture. Um, I know that people are learning Spanish at young ages. I took Spanish, I took Chinese for a few years in high school and French. So basically learning languages has always been somewhat implemented in curriculum, but in other places besides the United States, um, they are teaching English while here in the United States, I believe we are um, encouraged to ultimately learn different languages. Um, this gives more opportun employment opportunities for those who speak English. And this is something um, that they're able to learn the language in where they live and ultimately are able to move or go to other places. Um, and it also gives the opportunity and ability to compete in the global economy. This is something that is extremely important and just shows that the expansion of a language where we all can communicate and share ideas is, is what, we, what we necessarily need to progress and as, as a world. So an example for me that kind of puts this all in perspective is the United Nations. So basically, they, the United Nations is a governing body that where every country territory is represented by a representative. Not everyone speaks the same language, but each country has a translator who translates their language from one linguistic to another. So basically, this is kind of like a forum where we are able to see that all countries have different languages, but with the help of translation and being able to speak to, with one another, this is where we have a medium where policies are formed and ultimately implemented for the world. And this is a place where communication is ideal and key to success and progression from one country to another. Um, the United Nations to me is just a prime example of how policy and communication and the English language or just translation and communication comes to a head. And I think that the United Nations is something that is extremely beneficial for us and for the world. And it kind of just was something that I was reminded of when I was taking this course and learning information about English language, communication, and 
what we need in the world to implement policy and communication. So in conclusion, everyone's going to have their own opinion is if having a universal language is important or if English is the universal language. Um, there are definitely pros and cons, of course, to the expansion of the English language, as I laid out for you in my presentation. It is clear that there are those who there's something beneficial when it comes to them, but there's also some things that have been lost. Um, I believe that it's important for each person to develop their own perspective and opinion regarding it, but I believe that this is something that is extremely crucial in policy, communication, and the progression of the world as a whole and moving towards better and more positive days. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and have a great evening.